Flood advisories are in effect along a 500-mile stretch of the Gulf Coast. It spans from Corpus Christi, Texas, all the way to New Orleans. The slow-moving remnants of Tropical Storm Beta continue to hit the region with heavy rain. Janet Shamlian has the latest. A city submerged, Houston underwater, cars and trucks stranded on miles of flooded roads. Tropical Storm Beta making landfall along the coast, then lashing southeast Texas. This storm is barely moving. It has been raining nonstop like this since late last night. And Houston, which floods even during a moderate rain, cannot absorb all this water. Bayous overflowing their banks. Some areas are inundated by more than a foot of relentless rain. How worried are you? Very worried. Every time it rains, we start worrying, especially after Harvey. Many were caught off guard. This man ditched his car just in time. Others ignoring the warnings. Where does he think he's going? More than 100 high water rescues in Houston as the now tropical depression barely budges. Let's hope this system will, will start moving at a quicker pace. Five other storms have already hit the Gulf this year. Some homes are still without power almost a month later. Tonight, there is more rain in the forecast. No relief for a storm-weary region. Janet Shamley and CBS News, Houston. For more on Beta, CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Birodelli joins me now. Hi there, Jeff. So what's the latest with respect to Beta? Where is it headed now? So it's finally moving north, but it's not moving very fast. However, I think by tomorrow morning, the rain will finally shut off in Houston, but it has been a deluge for the past couple of days. Take a look at these numbers, 11 inches, 13 inches right there, 15 inches of rain over just a couple of days. Remember, Houston is all concrete, and so the water just kind of runs off, unfortunately. All right, so looking at the radar, as you can see, these bands, these tentacles from Tropical Depression Beta sticking out into the Gulf of Mexico and still moving across the Houston area. That's why tropical systems produce so much rain. They have these tentacles that kind of draw moisture in from the Gulf of Mexico. But the good news is notice by tomorrow morning it is moving out towards Louisiana into Mississippi and eventually into Alabama and Tennessee as well. And as far as how much extra rain we're going to see, well in Houston maybe about another two, three inches of rain. They don't need that, but it's not horrible because the heaviest rain is going to move northeast of them soon, which is a little bit of better news. But anywhere in the purple is eight inches plus of rain, so there's still a lot of rain to go. Elsewhere, there's some good news. Now we do have Teddy, which was a hurricane. It's transitioning into an extra tropical monster of a storm with 50 plus foot waves uh, just out here and, and some big swells along the coast. But elsewhere, there's really not much finally out there. There is Beta, which by the way is connected to Teddy. You can see that connection right there. And also that's Paulette. Uh, located in the eastern part of the Atlantic Ocean, but things are really starting to quiet down for now for at least the next week and a half probably or so should generally be fairly quiet. All right, a bit of good news. Well, Jeff, let's talk about the climate connection here. An active hurricane season is measured on the number of storm systems. So far this year, we have exhausted the list of official names for 2020 and dipped into the Greek alphabet. So can we expect to do this more often in the coming years as the planet continues to warm? So it's debatable. It makes logical sense that if the ocean's warmer, you would see more storms. And we, we very well may, but the research has been very conflicted on that. Some of our computer models show that later in the century, the number of storms may actually go down a little bit, whereas others show it may go up. So we're very confident about other aspects of hurricanes, and I'll show you that right now, but not necessarily about the numbers. What matters more, though, is how much damage they cause. So what matters more is the intensity and also how much rain they drop. So, you know, we expect them to drop substantially more rain, just like Harvey. Harvey slowed down, Beta slowed down, Sally slowed down, Florence slowed down. There is evidence that a warmer climate, we see slower moving storms. So they drop more rain, but also a warmer atmosphere, like a bigger sponge can hold more moisture and it drops more rainfall. So the estimate on Harvey is 15 to 30 percent more rain because of human caused climate change. They also have a higher potential intensity, so there's more category threes, fours, and fives. Rapid intensification happens faster, but the one question we don't know the answer to is, will we see more or less storms? I think generally we'll probably end up seeing more storms, but again, the science is certainly not in on that for sure. 
Well, Jeff, finally, a report out today from the National Snow and Ice Data Center at the University of Colorado Boulder found that Arctic sea ice has reached its second lowest level ever. How much mm -hmm. of that is due to climate change? Well, it's all due to climate change. I mean, the Arctic is warming at three times the rate of the rest of the globe. And we have seen tremendous shifts in the amount of Arctic sea ice in terms of its thickness, its extent, uh, and all of those variables. So take a look at this. This is the Arctic sea ice extent. And you can see there's 2012 right there. And there's 2020. So 2012 is the standard bearer. And the reason why is we had this huge storm system in early August, which, which broke apart a lot of the ice and allowed it to melt. And so that's why 2012 is the lowest. But right behind that is 2020. We almost broke the record uh, this year. And just about every year we come close to breaking a record nowadays because it's so hot in the Arctic. Look at this. This is from the year 500, the year 750, 1,000 years ago. And take a look at what happened. It's kind of steady all throughout the centuries. And then all of a sudden, it just drops off a cliff and unfortunately wait a second you know what I can do I can show you that drop off a cliff there it is right there I needed to expand my screen a little bit but you can see it kind of drop off right there I mean it literally does drop off a cliff and just one more thing I want to show you is a comparison between this is the sea ice in 1980 look at it in 1980 tons of thick Arctic sea ice look at how thick it is right now I mean look at that dramatic change between 1980 and 2020 right there. So we're seeing dramatic shifts in the Arctic, and those are only going to permeate further and further south. What they're seeing now is a look at our future. Things are going to change rapidly. All right, really eye-opening to see those graphics there. Jeff Perdelli for us. Jeff, thank you. You're welcome.